Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about running FFmpeg on a Mac Mini with the M1, the new Apple Silicon processor. And this should also apply to the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro that have the M1 processor. So I've been doing some testing to get FFmpeg to run on this Mac Mini, and I tried a couple of different things. I tried Mac ports, and I wasn't able to get it to run using Mac ports. I downloaded it and compiled it, and I could compile a basic version, but it didn't have most of the features in it. It's kind of complicated to add all those features in. So a person could probably go down that route if they wanted the absolute best performance. But I'm guessing in a few months they'll release a version that will run on it natively. So the easiest way to do it was to install it the same way that you do it on Intel. So I was going to redirect people to the Intel install video, but I think what I'll do is I'll just take that video, I may edit it just slightly, and I'll tag it on the end of this video, and I'll add chapters to this video so you can access it quickly. If you want to jump right to the install, you can use the chapters to get there. But I'll put it after this video so you don't have to go to the other video. I'll also put a link in the description to video notes because I'll be typing a lot of commands in and it's probably easier to read them off the website or you can copy and paste them. So when you do this technique you're running it with the Rosetta emulation but I'm going to do some tests and you'll see that it actually can use the hardware encoding while running through Rosetta. So what I'm guessing is Rosetta has a way to tell that the software is using the video toolbox API that Apple supplies for hardware encoding and it's able to run the hardware encoding on the M1 chip just the same as it would run it on the Intel processor using QuickSync. In this video, I'll take a look at the performance between Intel and the M1 processor. So I have my terminal open and I have two computers here. On the left, I have the Mac mini that I'm on. And on the right, I have my previous laptop. It says MBP new, it's about five years old. This is an early 2015 MacBook Pro Retina as a Core i5 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM. So I've rebooted both of these computers. I turned on do not disturb on both and nothing is currently open on the MacBook Pro. On the Mac mini, I have the notes application open, which I'll close right now. There we go. So I have the text edit open and I have the terminal open on this Mac mini and I've SSA into this MacBook Pro. That's how I'm accessing it. So I'm on the desktop in the terminal on both of these computers and each of them have this file here. It's a 4k file of a train. I'm not going to open it now because I don't want this computer to cache it before I run it on both computers. I have two commands down here that I'm going to run. They're ffmpeg commands. It starts off with time so we can time this and see how long they take and the input file is that train and I'm going to scale these to 1080p. So that's a common task someone might do with ffmpeg because I'm taking 4k video and dropping it down to 1080p and the codecs are different on these two commands here. The top one is using Video Toolbox, which is the hardware encoding on the Mac. The bottom is using the LibX264, which is software encoding on FFmpeg. I have the video bitrate here set to 4400K on both. And then the PIX format is YUV420P. The audio codec I'm just copying. And then I name the top one out underscore VTB for Video Toolbox. And the bottom I do out underscore SW for software. So I'm going to run this top command on both computers and we'll see the performance. So I'm going to hit enter on one, I'll click on the other one right away and click enter on it too. So I may speed up parts of the video here. Right off the bat, the Mac Mini started a lot faster than the Intel computer. And it says the speed right now is running at 2.54x on the Mac Mini, and the Intel is running at 1.19. And remember, this is running under Rosetta, so this is actually running the Intel code on the Mac Mini, doing hardware encoding. So like I said, I think it's funneling it through the video toolbox to actually do hardware encoding on the M1 processor. Okay, so the M1 is finished. That took 36 seconds. We'll wait for the Intel to finish up. Okay, that finished up. That took a minute and 20 seconds. So that was a little over twice as long. So I guess my point in doing this is to show someone that if you want to run FFmpeg on a computer with the M1 processor, you're going to get very good performance out of it. It could potentially be better if it was compiled to run natively on Apple Silicon, but it's already blowing away my five-year-old MacBook Pro. So now I'll run the bottom command. This will test the software encoding. On the left, we're seeing 1.3x speed. And on the right, we're seeing 0.61 or 0.6x speed. So what this is, is this is saying it's doing it 1.22 times faster than the actual video speed. So the one on the right is doing it half as fast. So when you're looking at these two, if I was actually doing some streaming with FFmpeg, the old Intel computer wouldn't be able to keep up with this, but the M1 would be able to because you have to have at least 1x speed in whatever processing you're doing, like if you're sending this out to a streaming server. 
Okay, the M1 finished up and it took one minute and 30 seconds. So software encoding on the M1 was a little bit slower than hardware encoding was on the Intel, but it was only 10 seconds slower, really. Okay, that finished up. That took three minutes and 15 seconds. So it took a little over twice as long as the M1 processor. And like I said, this is a five-year-old MacBook Pro, so there might be some newer Intel Macs that could do this faster than what the M1 is doing right now. But I'm guessing I'm not the only one that's going to be upgrading from an older, you know, five-year-old Mac to an M1. And this is the kind of performance boost that you can see out of FFmpeg on this hardware. So I can move these out of the way and come down here. I can open up these videos. They probably look identical. For some reason, the time stamps on these are weird, the time code. These are from a GoPro. And actually, the train doesn't come in for a little while. There we go. They both look really good. Of course, this thing will play the 4K video very well also. I'll do this full screen. Now I record these videos at 720p, so I just pulled that quick clip up of 4K video, but it doesn't really show anything because I'm not capturing this at 4K. So now I'm going to tag on the install video, and if you do have any questions, drop a comment below, and I'll have my playlist down below too of my other Mac videos. And I'll also put a link to my website where I have some FFmpeg, almost like recipes on things you can do with FFmpeg if you're interested in that. So I'll switch over to install video now. This video I'm going to go over the procedure for installing FFmpeg on Mac OS Big Sur. So I'll put a link below to my FFmpeg playlist where you can find some different FFmpeg projects, and I'll also put a link below to the commands we're going to be typing in to install this. So I'm guessing most people watching this video have a general idea of what FFmpeg is, but if you don't, FFmpeg is command line software for manipulating video. So you can do things like scale video, you can rotate it, you can turn photos into a time-lapse video, or you can take video and turn it into the individual frames as JPEGs or PNGs. There are a lot of different things you can do with FFmpeg. You can also stream with it. So to get started, you want to go to the FFmpeg website. That's ffmpeg.org. Then you want to go to download. Scroll down till you see the Apple, click on that, then click on Static Builds for Mac OS 64-bit. So there are two different versions of FFmpeg. You have the release versions and the development versions. And you can use either one of these. The development versions will have the latest bug fixes. So you can start with the development versions, and if you're having any weird issues, you can always switch to a release version. So previously, you could download one file and download all of the components, but now you have to download them separately. So we have FFmpeg, and that's for manipulating video. You have FFprobe, and that's for taking a video file or even a graphic, and it tells you information about that file. So it'll tell you the frame rate, the resolution, things like that. And then we also have FF Play, and that will play video. There's also FF Server, and that was for streaming video, and that's been deprecated. You can see the last release here was in 2018, and this is filmed in 2020. So the snapshot is this one with the long string after it, and then the one with the version number is the release version. So if you go directly under that, you'll see the different ways to download. So I'm going to click Download a Zip, and I'll do that for FFmpeg. I'll allow the download. I'll scroll down to FF Probe, and I'll download that as Zip. And I'll scroll down to FF Play and I'll download that as zip. So that shouldn't take too long to download here. So while that's downloading, I can minimize this browser here and then I'll go to the Finder and I'll go to my Downloads folder. And you can see the software being downloaded. So I'll download those as zip files. You want to unzip those. And when you unzip it, you should have FF Play, FF Probe, and FFmpeg. And this was from a previous video, so I'll just remove it. So you want to open up your terminal next. And you can type Command Space and type in Terminal. Otherwise, you can go to your Applications folder and then scroll down to Utilities, double click on it, and then scroll down to Terminal and open it up. I'll make this a little bigger here. So now we're getting into the command line. And like I said earlier, you can go to my website to find these commands so you can copy and paste them. So I'm in my home directory and I want to go to the Downloads directory. So I can type CD space tilde forward slash and then Downloads. I'll hit Enter. I can type LS here to list the files and we see the three files there. Next, I want to check if there's a directory to put these into. So I want to type LS space forward slash USR forward slash 
local forward slash bin and it says no file or directory. So we need to create that file. So I'll clear my screen here. I'm going to clear my screen off and to make this easier to read. So in order to create that directory or folder, you want to type in sudo, which is S-U-D-O space M-K-D-I-R, and that means make directory, space dash P, and I'll get into that in a minute, and space, and then forward slash U-S-R, forward slash local, forward slash bin. So what P is doing is it's going to create each one of these directories if they don't exist. So you could just add directories here all day long, and it would create all of these directories. If you don't have P on there, it will just try and create the last directory, which is bin here. And if local doesn't exist, you'll get a failure. So I'll hit enter here. It's going to ask me for my password, so I'll enter that in. Now I'll press the up arrow until I see the ls command, and we see it doesn't give us an error this time. Next, I want to copy the binaries into that directory. So I'll type sudo space cp space, and then ff asterisk space forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash bin. I'll hit enter. And now if we run that list command again, we'll see that the binaries are in there. So I'll clear my screen here. So the Mac system isn't going to let us run these because we downloaded them from the internet. So we need to remove them from quarantine. So to do that, we want to type in sudo space x-a-t-t-r space dash dr space com dot apple dot quarantine space forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash bin forward slash ff asterisk. I'll hit enter. That will remove them from quarantine. Next, I want to check my path, so I'll type in echo, space, dollar sign, path, all in caps. I'll hit enter. So this is the path, and these are the directories you can execute files in. So we see here we have USR local bin. So that means I can type ffmpeg, hit enter, and it will find that in that directory and it will run it. So we have it installed. If for some reason you don't have that in your path, so I would try running ffmpeg and see if it works on your system. If it doesn't, go to your home directory, so type cd, hit enter, and when you type cd with nothing after it, it takes you to your home directory. Next, type touch space tilde forward slash dot zshrc, then hit enter. Next, type open space dash e space tilde slash dot zshrc. So what open e will do is it will open this file in the text editor on the Mac. I'll hit enter here. You'll see it's opening text editor. And then in here, type path plus equals forward slash USR forward slash local forward slash bin. Hit enter. Then I'll type command S to save, command W to close. And now you need to close your terminal or you can just type in source space dot ZSHRC and that will load it. Now, if I echo my path again, you can see it added in here, USR local bin. So that was unnecessary because it was already in here, but I'm just showing this as an example. So I'm going to remove that ZSH RC from my system because it didn't exist prior. If it had other things in there, I wouldn't want to remove it. So these instructions are for using the Z shell. I'll put a link below to instructions on doing this if you're using the bash shell on your system. So at this point we have FFmpeg, FF play, and FF probe on our system. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Like I said, I have the link below to my FFmpeg notes where I have a lot of different tasks on there you can use. I also have a bunch of videos that are in my FFmpeg playlist. But if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.